Some of these will never be granted. Not some. Most. They deserve more than... I decide what everyone deserves. So I make this wish. Disney's Wish is now playing in cinemas and focuses on the story of Asha and her journey in the city of Rosas, where there's a mad king of foot stealing wishes. It's now up to her to stop his corrupt magic from spreading across the kingdom and saving everyone's wishes to help them fulfill their own destinies. So ever since the announcement of this movie came out, I thought to myself, this movie in concept sounds pretty darn interesting. And I'm gonna use the word concept a lot here because everything here just felt very conceptual from start to end. I did like a lot of the musical scores. I liked the animation style, a lot of the poses here, the rigging. I thought it was really well done, well crafted. The animators did a great job. The art style is just not something for me. Focusing a little bit more on that word concept, a lot of this movie just felt conceptual. It never felt like this movie was the final draft of itself. Now, as I continued watching this film, I was waiting for the moment for me to actually get over this hurdle of not liking the art. There's lots of shows, movies out there to where I didn't like the art at first, but it grew on me over time. Whereas here, it just felt like this was a initial design. It almost felt kind of like storyboarding coming to life, but just a step further. Whereas the movie overall was just a a huge step behind in terms of a polished product. And I do understand that that is a personal criticism that I know a lot of people may actually enjoy the art style of this movie. I do like a lot of the character designs, including Asha herself. Now that also does include the character of Star. Star is by far one of the cutest Disney characters that Disney has produced within like the last 10 to 15 years. I want my own little Star plushie. And it's not just with the technical design of Star, but with how Star is animated so much more differently than the rest of the characters in the movement of the character, it adds to the comedy, it adds to the story of Star and its background. So in terms of animation, again, I think that they killed it with this movie. Whereas the art style, it just didn't really land personally for me. Now, of course, this is a Disney movie. We have to talk about the singing. I, I can't sing. <laughs> we can't tell I can't sing. I was actually very impressed by at least two or three of the songs in this movie. There was one where they said, I'm gonna throw caution to the wind, but instead they say, I'm gonna throw caution to each and every turning point. And throw caution to every warning sign. It just felt very janky with the lyrics, but like the rest of the song, my gosh, it was a really pretty song, but there were a few that really just made me want to stand up and start singing. And I did, I did like that. And I'm not, I'm not a vocalist by, by any means, as you could probably tell. <laughs> so I think the biggest question here in terms of it being a Disney movie, is this any good? Should I take my kids to go watch this movie? Uh, yes, I think kids are absolutely going to enjoy this movie. And I do believe that there is a theme, a message that the kids can take and grow up with and look back on. However, in terms of the storytelling, the writing, how characters get from place to place. It's a pretty generic script, but in terms of execution, I think that they could have done a lot more with this, especially in terms of the villain. I think that they could have done a lot more here to flesh him out. Unfortunately, Chris Pine, he didn't really provide any interest for me. There wasn't really that Chris Pine wow factor. You are their handsomest, most beloved king. You're right. I am a handsome king. When I think back to memorable Disney villains, I think of the bombastic voices, such as Scar, Cruella de Vil, Gaston. They all have a bombastic presence that makes them stand out from the movie. Asha, as a lead character, I thought that she was pretty interesting. Again, in concept. The final execution of Asha just didn't really stick out too much to me. There is a lesson in this movie to be learned and Asha does learn it. However, she doesn't learn it through her own willpower. She learns it after singing a song with a bunch of animals and mushrooms, telling her exactly what that lesson is. So seeing her journey unfold, it wasn't really all that fun to watch. I mean, the song was nice, but in, in, in terms in terms of watching Asha become a better version of herself to end up saving the day from this corrupt king, it just didn't feel satisfying. The conclusion didn't hit as hard as it should have. I would dare to argue that some of the side characters were a lot more interesting than both Asha and the villain. However, that being said, they were also very, very annoying. There's almost 
too much comedy in the movie, and during the serious moments, I wanted to let those feelings breathe. But instead, the little goat just had to insert some kind of witty, dumb joke that I just didn't even care for. Yeah. Oh, good find, Valentino. My butt found it. Oh gosh, it's just, why did they continue making those jokes? Just let the movie be the movie, let it breathe. We don't need to be laughing every 15 seconds. I'm gonna end it there. End it there. But despite all of that being said, this movie, it, it is fun. It did feel magical. Now, there is one thing I want to discuss with you guys before I end the video. It is a little spoiler related. So if you guys don't want to be spoiled whatsoever, I would say pause the video here, watch the movie, come back and see what I'm about to discuss because I feel like it changes the whole dynamic of this movie. So this movie actually ends in tragedy. If you think about it, even for a second, you see the king at the end of the film who gets trapped in the mirror. And for a split second, you see this impact frame of the mirror mirror on the wall mask. And if we all know his story, he was a normal kingly man who got cursed and then got put into a, into a mirror. The queen, uh, who helped put him away uh, could could be the evil queen. Because at the beginning of the movie, the king, he is kind of a jerk, but he's not to the level of an extremist. Whereas later in the movie, he slowly starts getting corrupted by this evil magic, and he becomes this extremist who wants to essentially destroy his whole town that he's worked to build up. And while reading between the lines and seeing that impact frame, I couldn't help but come up with this theory that this film actually ended with tragedy. And I think it all makes sense because this movie, it's a prequel to literally every classic Disney film, which again does tie back to the old Disney roots of taking really, really dark twisted fairy tales and turning them into a positive uh, film. So yeah, I do dig the theory, but again, it's not concrete. I was discussing it with my friend after the film concluded and I just couldn't help but feel like that made the movie way better. There's literally red yarn utilized in this movie almost in every scene. I mean, like, connecting the dots, making theories. So that's gonna go ahead and do it for my review of Wish. Did you guys watch the movie? Did you guys enjoy it? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, if you guys enjoyed today's video, be sure to leave a like as it does help out tremendously. If you guys wanna watch some more movie reviews from me, be sure to click somewhere on the screen. It does help out as well, a lot. But otherwise, my name's Austin. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next video. Adios, amigos.